Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. It's getting easier and easier to put sound into everything. Put it that it's way. true, yeah. It is everywhere. <laughs> but like you were mentioning before, I don't know that it's conscious. You know, I don't know that a lot of it is is like subconscious. Like we don't we're we know it's around us, but we're and we're probably being affected by it, but we don't recall afterwards what it was we heard. <laughs> exactly. You know, the you're you're all sound cuts through where visual doesn't. You mm -hmm. do a lot more um uh, editing before processes in the brain for visual because you know you're you're walking in the old you know um planes and you hear the twig break and you don't is that going to be a lion rushing down to attack you you know our brains are still wired that way so we still process a lot more and a lot faster in sound and um so that's becoming more and more important um Generative AI might um, impact how we, to get back to your question, earlier question, might impact how we construct sound. Um, you know, there's so much legality issues right now in terms of plagiarism, you know, because that's what it is, essentially. It's just reconstructing things from other people that um, I don't know if it's going to affect it in the short term until they work all that out. Um but um, when they do, you know, when do you use one of the considerations with more of the audio-enabled devices? When do you use a manufactured sound that doesn't even use words to convey, like beeps and blops? When do you use uh, manufactured sounds? When do you use manufactured voices to communicate? And when do you use, you know, uh, human voices and the humanity? That's what we can provide, at least in the short term with AI grow, growing so much as AI doesn't have the humanity. You still need the humanity and the texture that that can't provide, the, the nuance, the subtlety that conveys the emotions because that's not keyed in. But sometimes you might not need that. Sometimes you might not want that. You know, do you want um, do you want a robotic dog talking to you? That sounds like a near perfect human, or do you want it? <laughs> Probably you not. Even, That'd be a little even, alarming. <laughs> yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do, do you want it to sound like a like a dog, even that's natural, or do you want it to sound more manufactured, right? Because it's it is and so there's the disconnect yeah there's you know, that whole uncanny valley too you know mm -hmm. so so much of the the ai if it's too perfect it just doesn't it it sets our 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 spidey senses off i don't know how else to <laughs> describe that um but yeah even even visually like if we see something too perfect it just it's just not right that's why i think mm -hmm. a lot of early cgi movies were were panned because they couldn't stand looking at it. <laughs> so yeah, it's you know, um, does it you know does it sound human and it your ears will pick up that something's not right. Yeah. So maybe in some situations that might be okay, but probably not for most connections and communications that need and want some humanity involved. Well, I think um, it's it's interesting too because when we're talking about audio matching the visual, then you, like you were saying if if the visual of a robotic dog is there, you're not expecting it to not have a robotic dog sound, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it doesn't there's a disconnect there. It's not the same thing. It it doesn't work because it's not related to each other. Mm -hmm. So 
So again, I guess that's kind of audio branding in the sense that we're trying to get across what that brand actually sounds like so that there's no disconnect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, I'll give an example on ATMs. I've long thought that they could be much more branded, right? You go into a big chain bank and um, it's the same beeps as you go into another chain bank. Why not brand the sound so people know that they're with a certain bank? Why not make it a little bit more, here's your money, which is a little bit more successful sounding versus don't forget your card, which could be a little bit more alarming sounding. But you don't want a bank to sound like a perfect human being. You don't want an ATM to sound like a perfect human being saying, hey, Jody, you forgot your ATM card, you know. Oh, my goodness, um, that would alarm me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so coming out like, but little beeps and bops that sound, that convey the message. Mm hmm in a, in a less, in a more humane way might be interesting and in a branded way so you could own it. Um, banks haven't really done that. They haven't really gone into that. Maybe they don't see that the financial benefit of um, owning the sound of their ATMs, um, but maybe someday they will. That I think that's an underutilized opportunity, but you could see the range, the decisions that need to go into it yeah. in terms of what kind of voice you would want versus... You know, you're, um, the Butterball Hotline, uh, which is in our um, new book on voice marketing, mm -hmm. you know, you use your um, your voice app to go and call the hotline as opposed to the phone. And, you know, a lot of it is uh, then you want it to be human and interactive as if, you know, you're talking to a human. Um, sometimes answering machines may be. Somewhere in between, you know, like the the call call machine, press one for this and press two for that. Maybe that doesn't need to be as quite as as human. But um, the other stuff you do, audiobooks, I think you would want it to. Oh, definitely, yeah. You know, that's that's a big thing. A, a lot of people are. Um, well, I don't. I don't know if a lot of people are doing this, but many companies are starting to use synthetic voices for e-learning. And the problem with that is that if it's not a human voice, you kind of don't pay as much attention to it. So if you really want to teach someone in an audio course, you're kind of missing out there because they're not really listening if it's not a human voice, if it's not a voice that they can relate to or that they enjoy listening to. It's it, harder to learn from that. So I would imagine it would be more fatiguing. I, yes. I would imagine a so. human voice would be less fatiguing than a manufactured voice that sounds human like. Yeah. Simply because of the variation in the voice. It's interesting that you mentioned fatigue too, because I do think that really a lot of this has to do with how much stress it's putting on the rest of our life if like i think you've said this before you can close your eyes but you can't you can't close your ears <laughs> i think mm -hmm. i've heard you say that before so yeah if you can't close your ears well then you're listening constantly to things that are stressing you out and mm -hmm. no one wants that in their life <laughs> mm -hmm. no one wants to be constantly subjected to that so yeah, I, I think there's a lost opportunity there in a lot of places. I think you're right about the banks, definitely. I know mm -hmm. that um, I think RBC here in Canada is starting to use an audio brand, but they haven't gotten it to their uh, ATMs so far as I am aware of. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that would be a great use for it, and, and hopefully they will get it there too. It's... Uh, it's different here in Canada, though, because I think we have like five bi big banks. There's like not that many. <laughs> so, But it still might make you feel better about oh, using, totally. the, using the one of the five that you're stuck with, right? <laughs> totally. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and part of that is, you know, part of that is about the experience and what kind of experience you want to give to your customer. Mm -hmm. And do you feel better about that experience uh, that you had afterwards? And so... Why not make it better for not a lot of extra effort? Very true, yeah.
What do you think are some of the most common misconceptions about audio branding? I know we've talked a lot about how it's being used and, and where it could be used, but are people making the mistake of assuming it's one thing when it's not? <laughs> yeah, people hear audio branding and they say, oh, jingles. And yeah. it's totally not a jingle. Now, some jingles can become an audio brand or become the basis for an audio brand. You know, a jingle is just basically some music bed that can is used to convey the words on top of it that, um, you know, 1-800, whatever, or, you know, um, uh, the name of the brand and the tagline, but it's sung. And so the music, if it's distinctive enough in the jingle, can become an part of an audio brand, but the audio brand is the entire audio language of a brand, just as uh, there's a total visual language of the brand. When you sit down and you do your brand development, you think, what kind of illustration style or photography style will it be? You know, is, <clears throat> or is one over the other? Which one? Why? What kind is it once it is? You know, photography could be more documentary style, could be, you know, more fantasy style or more, you know, there's all, all sorts of things. Uh, what kind of font are we picking? What kind of color? The same kind of consideration should go into an audio brand more than just writing some music to convey the words that you want at the end of a spot. Uh, so it's a whole audio language that you want to think of <clears throat> in terms of, um, you know, do you want to, something for your cell phone so ringtone do you want um what does your app sound like when it starts up what is um the package sound like if it's a package good and what are the radio tv if you're running radio or tv or both and a how do you tie things. it all together yeah yeah definitely the, a lot of things and on all, hold is one of those things that people forget like who how do you sound when people are waiting on your phone line <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a and big it, thing and a big thing in business to business is a sales meeting. Yes. One of the most important audiences that any brand has is, is its internal audience, um, which I like to call the walking brand. Um, you know, they're the people who convey the brand to the outside world. And so you need to convey the brand to them so they convey it out. And so your sales meeting, you know, might be all over the place. Colleen talks about this a lot. We're um, my co-author, Colleen Fahey. Um, you know, you play one thing for the CEO coming on and you play another thing for the sales director and you play another thing for the launch. And it comes across as disjointed as opposed to finding the right elements and portions of your total audio language to use at that time. So this, so the meeting feels part of the brand as well, because these are the people you're charging up to go out and represent the brand to the public. Um, so even there, you want to think of them. Yeah, definitely. And so are there particular brands you think that are using audio branding very effectively right now? Anyone that you would pinpoint that you think have gotten it right? Well, there's so many there's, in the book. I know there I are a lot do. of them. Yeah. <laughs> and those are some of the classic ones, you know, Intel, I think, got it right. Um, yeah. Though in many ways, that is more of an audio logo than a full blown audio brand but that's all they need i <clears throat> i think united got it right you know though they didn't construct their own unique audio brand so it's interesting what happens with uh public domain for that yeah. um song um um it list goes on and on so yeah yeah, I'm sure there are a lot out there. I was just wondering if you had a favorite. <laughs> well, um, and I believe this was done by the agency where, that Colleen has on uh, at CCM Sun, but mm -hmm. um, I really like the USAA. I think that fits psychographically that little, the way the call out is done uh, fits the brand so perfectly. <laughs> Yeah. It's a brand I've touched in other ways um, in my consulting, so I know the brand. And when I heard that, that's right. That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 
the one thing about audio brands is it's supposed to enhance your recall and uh, it's it's not there's a lot of insurance audio brands that um are coming to mind um nationwide i think mm -hmm. that actually started as a jingle yeah. and is becoming more of an audio brand um i think that's done right i think the uh netflix startup is is right on the Apple po um, laptop or Apple computer startup uh -huh. sound is right on for their computers. That that has a positive, oh, my computer's working. Right? <laughs> yeah, we the want way, it to work. <laughs> yes, the way the sound is, it sounds like it's supposed to be working. Yeah, a um, warm, welcoming sound. <laughs> yeah, so they're doing it right with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know the Snapple jar lid. Do a hundred a brand that's a hundred percent in all areas. I don't know, but I'm give because I'm giving you a little examples. yeah, little snippets of yeah. Each it's hard place. to get it right all around. I, I and all of these audio brands have one thing in common, and that is that they are constantly in use. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I I'm always interested to find out from companies that are interested in using audio branding or companies that use it, how often are you going to use it and where are you going to use it? Because the problem becomes if you get it done and you spend all this money and then you don't use it or you don't use it consistently, it's not going to work for you as well as you think it should. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like the, the Intel, like I know the, the Intel bong was like on every commercial for years and years and years because they were partially helping to buy the advertising and just said, just put our Intel little logo and, and sound on the end of your commercial and we will help fund it. And, you know, that's that's all they did. And and mm -hmm. it was fantastic because you heard it so many times <laughs> that you couldn't forget it and you know if you're if you have an audio brand using it is really the key yeah you, you gotta well same thing with um it's always easier to brand and reinforce a brand when you have more money to be more um <laughs> True. in people's yeah. faces but if you are a niche brand and you're reaching your niche really regularly they will see it and use it but yeah you really do need to do a touch point study and figure out where are you going to use it and how are you going to use it um you know the the pickles was basically radio because that's all we had mm -hmm. but it'll be interesting just to, to think about where we could have done it you know this was years ago yeah so um so old i'm some of this is, you know, pre-cell phone. Um, <laughs> there was a life like before the days, cell yeah. phone. <laughs> um, which has really changed a lot of the audio landscape, too, you know. It has. Um, it has. And a lot of us are listening to a lot of this on our cell phones. I mean, people listen to podcasts on their cell phones all the time. So podcast advertising and all of that that goes into that is another touch point being on hold actually on your cell phone often and mm. the the way that some of those sound is just so awful that you don't even want to put it on speaker <laughs> like they're they're so bad uh oh, I, I don't know i i think a lot of people miss out on the places that they could use that audio brand mm -hmm. simply because they're just not thinking about the breadth of it and and I think like you were explaining what audio branding really is, I think a lot of people mistake it for either just a jingle or just a sonic logo, and they don't really understand where those touch points could be. And I think it's if you're going to spend money on this, it's really important that you understand, like you were saying, have mm -hmm. a, a touch point plan because otherwise yeah. you're wasting money. <laughs> and any good brander should do that because mm -hmm. they should do it for visual as well. Yes. Where are we going to place our message? It's really more of a map in the, the, the day of your prospects. So where are they going to encounter your brand? And every encounter, how can you bring your brand to life in the fullest way possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Where do you think the future of this is going? What, what can you see audio branding doing in the future? Or maybe just like sound in general, I mean, for advertising? Well, you know, audio branding is one of the things we haven't talked about yet is, you know, cross-border communication. So like audio branding is really, really big in Europe because there's so many languages spoken and you can have an audio brand that speaks across the borders and still conveys um, the brand essence. And probably, you know, as, as America continues to diversify, that will become a bigger issue here as well. So you're going to be able to do that. More and more devices are becoming and things are becoming brand uh, sound enabled. So it's just going to increase that way um, as people become aware where they're missing opportunities. And as we live more and more on these things, you know, um, the phone, it's um, it, then, then it's going to be um, uh, more and more sound enabled. You know, some, some of those stuff, um, and as people get more comfortable with sound and talking to their computer, as opposed to typing at their computer and talking to their phone, not to a friend on the phone. I think that's one of the few things we don't do on our phone these days is actually talk um, to people. Um, uh, talking to your phone, not through your phone to friends, I think that's going to um, change the world as well with more and more sounds and branded experiences that are only sound um, enabled. Yeah, there's a lot more coming in that regard, too, I think, because our phones are only getting better at that, mm -hmm. as are any of the voice devices, voice activated devices that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, they'll uh, figure out dialects. <laughs> Um, I still remember the there's a, a, a really funny sketch where uh, some Scottish people are trying to get an elevator to to move with their voices and they the, the, the elevator doesn't recognize the accent. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I yeah, I just I yeah, that's I'm sure is a problem everywhere with devices of all kinds. <laughs> Hopefully it that'll is, get better. And, it <laughs> is. And, you know, um voices broadening the, the can broaden the perspective and, and for or the opportunity for brands because it's um could invite in more um um excluded audiences you know it's um visually impaired individuals uh -huh. um um their interaction with their computers will be so much easier and by making it easier for them it makes it easier for everyone who um are are fully you know visually enabled um it makes it easier for people who you know um for one reason or another who are slow to type um it makes it easier for um um people you know, lots of people uh so it's opening up a huge huge world but with that um it's opening up a world where the 485 red isn't necessarily going to be seen because it might even be screenless and that Very font true. that they spent so much money having some typographer craft for their custom execution is not even going to be seen so um you know all, marketers need to plan for that kind of world yeah how do you stand out when all you're being all you have is sound when you're just being heard that's it there's no visual at all mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah that's that's part of what audio branding helps solve the problem of <laughs> i guess that's not the best yeah. english way to put that but <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> but... <laughs> how do you how do you stand out when you're literally invisible and the only thing they can sense is sound yeah yeah it's it's a big question, and I think that a mm -hmm. lot of companies are going to have to give that some serious consideration, if not now, very, very soon, because mm -hmm. I think it's coming to a point where 
almost as many people are only going to hear as the people that are seeing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess we'll see where this all goes. It's uh, it's always evolving and constantly changing, and there are new and more exciting audio technology advancements coming. I know that um, Dolby Atmos is becoming a big thing. And that's like multi area sensory, <laughs> like it's, it's becoming very interesting. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess we just have to wait and see what happens. It's a brave new world, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you have many books and if you could do me a favor and, and list out the books so that people can look into them if they would like to do that that would be fantastic i will list out a few of them okay so, um, <laughs> um, the activation imperative and that is looks at how do you weave all the different platforms together and it gives a um, um, methodology so as more platforms as more avenues as more techniques tech uh, become out you're able to still integrate it together. So that's one, uh, global brand management. So how do you manage brand on a global scale? Um, it, you know, it's um, uh, brand globally, market locally, and, you know, how do you localify, so to speak? You know, so you need to localize certain things because everyone, every area, every audience has um, different aesthetics and needs and and such um voice marketing so um how is do that you the use, newest one now? that's the newest one okay mm -hmm. um how do you um harness um conversational ai to build relationships with your customers to engage them to fully it it really expands the opportunity for marketers and it builds another case for them to connect and and opportunities for marketers to connect with their customers and the more you can connect the better you can market uh -huh. um i did a one thing um uh, this was more of a challenge um i don't even know if this company still exists but you could still get the book on uh, amazon uh advertising under an hour and uh some students were in an mba program came up with a marketing plan business they had to develop a business and the business they came up with was books that could be read in an hour or less <laughs> and um on a, a, on a general idea. topic <laughs> and so um to help them out as one of the early ones um i did a book on everything you need to know about advertising that in a book that could be read in less than an hour by the average american reader uh -huh. and based on the reading speed of that um and then um, my first book was How to Succeed in Advertising When All You Have Is Talent. And uh, the story behind that was to, um, you know, I was struggling with my portfolio. So um, that was my way of getting in and talking. And it features the uh, career advice of 18 top creative directors. It's okay. pre, um, pre all this stuff. So um, this technology, st it does mm -hmm. have a little bit of technology in there. But um a lot of the strategies and advice is still good if you update it, but the examples are way, way out of date. <laughs> and then um, the last one I'll mention is audio branding, using sound to build your brand, which is how we ended up connecting. Yes. And has a has a great life of its own. And and um, hope you check that out as, as you are obviously interested in audio branding and audio if you're listening to this podcast this far into it. <laughs> One would hope. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, I found that book really interesting and, and enlightening in a lot of different ways. So yeah, it kind of got mm -hmm. my whole journey of this started four years ago. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for that book. And thank you for all the other books. And how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to do that? Um, Larry Minsky via LinkedIn is, one, is mm -hmm. an easy way. Uh, Google my name and my um, Columbia College Chicago email addresses pop up. So you could always do the old school way as that. Um, um, uh, 
Twitter, I don't, or I should say X. I, don't check <laughs> yeah, as often. I haven't got that figured out either. <laughs> yeah. You can talk about branding and, yeah. and what's a good case study of a not how to do it. But who knows? Maybe we'll be proven wrong, all these naysayers, because. Um, he has so other weird. plans, I think. That was the whole point, I think, of him doing it. it he mm -hmm. wanted to make it into something completely different. Well, I mean, I guess he kind of sabotaged it, <laughs> but mm -hmm. <laughs> but who knows what it'll become? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th those are a few ways um, okay. to get a hold of me. Great. Well, wonderful. Orange Minsky for books, Larry Minsky for uh, LinkedIn. There's a guy who publishes under the name Larry Minsky. It's all about jazz. That's not me. Okay. So. Good to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just okay. gave a plug to somebody I don't know, but I know the name because. Why not? Published. Yes. People could, could stand to read more about jazz. I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank exactly. you so much. This has been really fantastic. And I learned a lot and I, I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> I enjoyed myself for the first, yeah, for one fast. Um, thank um, you for having yeah. me. Thank you so I appreciate much. It. <laughs> well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>